The movie Jaws is easily one of the most famous movies of all time and is often on the list of favorite movies for many people who have seen it. The movie has a lot of memorable moments, such as the pond scene, with this shot being one of my favorite shots from the movie simply because of how terrifying it is. The dog scene with the two guys trying to catch the shark. The USS Indianapolis speech, which arguably is the best scene of the movie. And of course, the opening scene, which still haunts me to this day and I still have trouble watching. The film was adapted from a 1974 novel of the same name by Peter Benchley. But did you know that Benchley's novel was in turn inspired by the attacks on Jersey Shore of 1916 by a creature that became known as the Madawan Man-Eater or the Jersey Man-Eater. The first attack occurred on Saturday, July 1st, 1916, at a resort town called Beach Haven on Long Beach Island off the southern coast of New Jersey. 28-year-old Charles Van Sant decided to go for a quick swim before dinner, but he had barely made it into the water before he began shouting. As his dog was playing on the nearby beach, many of the other people on the beach simply assumed that he was calling to the dog, not realizing that Van Sant was in fact being attacked by a shark that was biting his legs. But help would eventually arrive in the form of lifeguard Alexander Ott and bystander Sheridan Taylor, who pulled the bleeding Van Sant from the water. They would later say that as they moved back to shore, the shark followed them as long as it could. Van Sant's left thigh was completely stripped of its flesh, and he would bleed to death on the manager's desk of the same hotel that he was staying at with his family. Despite this attack, the beaches remained open. Sea captains entering the ports of Newark and Newark City would report sightings of large sharks swimming off the coast of New Jersey, but these reports were all dismissed. Five days after the attack on Van Sant, the second major attack would occur. On Thursday, July 6, 1916, at the resort town of Spring Lake, New Jersey, 27-year-old Charles Bruder was swimming 130 yards from shore. During this swim, a shark would bite him in the abdomen and severed his legs, which turned the water red. Hearing screams and seeing the red water, a nearby woman believed that a canoe with a red hull had capsized and was floating just at the water's surface. She would immediately notify two lifeguards, Chris Anderson and George White, who then rowed out to the scene in a lifeboat but they soon realized that this wasn't a capsized canoe. This was a shark attack. They grabbed hold of Bruder and quickly pulled him out of the water. Unfortunately, Bruder would bleed to death on their way back to shore. Bruder was a Swiss bell captain at the Essex and Sussex Hotel, and after his death, the guests and workers at that hotel, as well as neighboring hotels, would raise money to send back to Bruder's mother in Switzerland. It would be quiet for almost a week after that, but then, on July 12th, there were two more attacks in Madawan Creek, near the town of Keyport. Some day before, a resident of Madawan Creek and a sea captain named Thomas Cottrell had reported seeing an 8-foot-long shark in the creek, but this report would be dismissed by the town. So, on July 12th, at around 2 p.m., a group of local boys were playing in this creek. The boys later reported that they first saw something that they believed was a board or a rotten log but they then spotted a dorsal fin and realized that they were dealing with a shark. They all rushed back to shore and tried to climb up on land, but one of the boys, 11-year-old Lester Stilwell, would be pulled underwater before he could climb from the creek. The other boys immediately ran to town for help and several men came to investigate. 
Upon arriving, some of the men dove into the creek to try and find Stillwell. And they did manage to locate the boy's body and they tried to return to shore. But then, local businessman, 24-year-old Watson Stanley Fisher, was bitten by the shark in front of the other townspeople. His right thigh was severely injured and he was immediately pulled from the water and rushed to hospital. But he bled to death at the hospital. The body of the young boy, Lester Stilwell, which had been lost after Fisher was attacked, would be recovered two days later, on July 14th. The fifth and final victim came 30 minutes after the attacks on Stilwell and Fisher, when 14-year-old Joseph Dunn was bitten in the leg by a shark. Fortunately for Dunn, his brother and friend were present when the attack occurred and they immediately grabbed hold of Dunn trying to pull him from the shark's grasp. Which led to a vicious tug-of-war battle with the shark, a battle that they managed to win. And Dunn was taken to St. Peter's University Hospital in New Brunswick. Dunn would recover from this bite and was released on September 15, 1916. After the first attack on Charles Van Sant, scientists and the press were reluctant to blame the death of Van Sant on a shark. But after the second attack, the media's response was much more sensational. This led to a growing panic that ended up costing New Jersey resort owners a lot of money. To calm the growing panic, a press conference would be held on July 8, 1916 at the American Museum of National History, with scientists Frederick Augustus Lucas, John Treadwell Nichols, and Robert Cushman Murphy as panelists. They stressed that a third run-in with a shark was unlikely. Remember, this is before the attack on Fisher and Stilwell and they expressed surprise that anyone had been bitten by shark at all, because at the time, shark were believed to be very timid creatures. But despite this, they still warned swimmers to stay close to shore and to take advantage of the netted bathing areas that had been installed at public beaches after the first attack. After the incident with Stilwell, Fisher and Dunn, Residents of Matawan would line Matawan Creek with nets and detonated dynamite, trying to catch and kill the shark. The Matawan mayor even ordered the Matawan Journal to print wanted posters offering a $100 reward to anyone who killed a shark in the creek. But despite this, no sharks were captured or killed in Matawan Creek. The shark attacks would soon reach the U.S. government, and soon there were shark hunters across the coasts of New Jersey and New York, with armed shark hunters in motorboats patrolling the coasts. And bounties would be offered to individuals that were hunting sharks. This led to hundreds of sharks being captured on the East Coast, which has been described as the largest scale animal hunt in history. There have been many studies trying to figure out what type of shark that was responsible for the attacks, and also if it was more than one shark. Some believe that, like in the movie, it was a single, northward swimming shark that was responsible. But others have said that it was most likely more than one shark. On July 14th, a taxidermist named Michael Slicer caught a 7.5-foot, 325-pound shark while fishing in Raritan Bay, which is only a few miles from the mouth of Madawan Creek. The shark nearly sank the boat before it was killed, and Slicer would claim that when he opened the shark's belly, he would remove what looked like fleshy material and bones weighing nearly 15 pounds. Scientists would identify this shark as a young great white shark. 
and after this shark had been captured and killed, no further attacks were reported along the Jersey Shore in the summer of 1916, which led many to conclude that this shark was the so-called Jersey Manator. But it's still debated whether or not this great white caught on July 14th, 1916 was actually the real killer or perhaps just one of them. Further studies as recently as 2011 suggests that a bull shark may also have been involved in the attacks. The injuries of Joseph Dunn suggested that the type of bite was more likely made by a bull shark as opposed to a great white. Biologists George A. Lano and Richard Ellis have both suggested that a bull shark could have been responsible for all of these fatal Jersey Shore attacks. Lana writes in his book Sharks Attacks on Man from 1975 that one of the most surprising aspects of the Matawan Creek attacks was the distance from the open sea. And Ellis also points out that the great white is an oceanic species and it's unusual to find it swimming in a tidal creek, if not outright impossible. But the bull shark, however, is known for swimming from the ocean into freshwater rivers and streams. They are also known to having attacked people all around the world. Of course, for a time, there were also other theories of what could have caused the attacks, with some people suggesting that a sea turtle could have been the one responsible for the attacks. But those who believed that it was a shark would place the blame on German U-boats. The First World War was still raging at this time and many people believed that the sharks had possibly gotten accustomed to devouring human bodies in the waters of the German war zone. And that these sharks had then moved towards the coasts of New Jersey, which led to the attacks. The attacks by the Jersey Maneater forced many scientists in the United States to revise their view on sharks, as they had previously assumed that sharks were timid and powerless creatures. But what caused the attacks though? One theory says that it was due to a really bad heat wave that struck the northeastern United States in July of 1916. Ocean swimming was still a relatively new way to pass the time and with the heat wave there were much more people in the water trying to cool off. Sharks are drawn to low frequency erratic thumping sounds that mimic prey in distress. So it's theorized that all of these people in the water drew an increased number of sharks to the area which in turn led to the shark attacks in the summer of 1916. While sharks can be very dangerous, shark attacks against humans are not common at all. Over the last 50 years, scientists have found that there is a documented average of less than 50 unprovoked shark attacks per year globally. In fact, humans kill way more sharks than sharks kill humans. But the Jersey Maneater, the movie Jaws, and even the tragic tale of the USS Indianapolis have all led to the conception that sharks are dangerous killing machines. The Jersey Maneater attacks led to shark hunts that have been described as the largest scale animal hunt in history. After the release of Jaws, shark populations plunged as thousands of hunters and fishermen tried to catch trophies, something that both the author of the book Peter Benchley and the film's director Steven Spielberg have expressed a lot of regret and even guilt over. Sharks have existed for more than 450 million years. In fact, they have been around for longer than trees. And they are one of the only animals to have survived four of the big five mass extinctions in Earth's history. While they may not be the monsters that many think them to be, they are still wild animals and should be respected as such. Remember, when you go into the water, 
you are in their territory. <laughs>